Hello students, today we will start the third chapter and the name of this chapter is Assembler. First of all we will see the introduction of Assembler where we will see now the history of first generation languages and the second generation languages. In first generation of languages, machine level languages were used to write computer programs which were directly executed by the machine. But it was very difficult to write programs in machine level languages. So, in the second generation, low level languages were developed, which are called as assembly languages. However, assembly languages are not understandable to the computer machine. Therefore, the system software called assembler is used to convert assembly language into machine level language. Now we will see the definition of assembler. Assembler is a system software which acts as a translator and it converts assembly language program into the machine language. As assembly language is a machine dependent language, assemblers are also machine specific. This means the program that is written for one processor may not work on the particular another processor. That's why it is called as the machine dependent. On this slide I have shown the diagram of assembler where it, it is going to take the assembly language program as input. It is the assembler is going to process it and it will generate the machine level language program. After this we will see the features of assembly language. Assembly language uses mnemonic operation codes for machine instruction instead of numeric operation code. That is, instead of the numeric code, say 01, the mnemonic code AWD is used to specify an instruction of addition. Likewise, instead of the numeric code, say 02, the mnemonic code SUB is used to specify the instruction of subtraction. Here the mnemonic operation codes are easy to understand and remember than in the numeric codes which are used in machine level languages. The second feature of assembly language is symbolic operands. Assembly language uses symbolic names to represent a data or address. For example, instead of specifying the machine address to store a data, we specify the symbols say sum, total, number, etc. Here the assembler performs memory bindings to these names by reducing the task of the programmer. And the third feature of assembly language is data declaration. In assembly language, data can be declared in a variety of notations. Assembler does the conversion of constants into their machine representation. The constant data can be declared in decimal notation instead of machine representation. So these are the features of assembly language which makes the job of programming very easy. Now we will see the advantages of assembly language over the machine language. The first advantage is the assembly language program increases the readability due to the mnemonic operation code instead of the numeric operation code. Just now we have discussed in the features of assembly language instead of using the numeric code say 01 or 02 you can specify the mnemonic code a double d or sub respectively for the particular operation code which is going to increase the readability of the program the second advantage is the data or address is represented by symbolic names which also increases the readability of the program. Now what it means, instead of representing the particular address say 100 or 105 
or 500 we are going to give some symbolic names to these addresses so instead of reading the address value it is easy to read the particular symbolic names which is going to increase the readability of the program the third advantage is that we can declare a data in a variety of notations which avoids the manual conversion of constant into machine representation and it is going to be very easy for the programmer to write the programs the last advantage of using the assembly language is the programs are easy to debug and modify than machine language programs so these are the number of advantages of assembly language over the machine language now we will see the disadvantages of assembly language an extra software processor that is assembler is required to convert the assembly language program into the machine language here we are writing the program in assembly language which is not directly understandable by the computer so here we are required the assembler the second disadvantage is every assembly program needs to be converted into machine language before the execution and which is the time consuming process the third disadvantage is assembly language instructions are machine dependent means the program that are written for one type processor may not work on another type of processor so these are the number of disadvantages of assembly language now we will see the statement format assembly language statement has the following format we are going to specify the label first if it requires then the opcode will be there after this the number of operand specification the square bracket indicates the optional part you may include the number of operand specification as per your requirement here if the label is present then it is a symbolic name associated with the memory address the operand specification has the following format you are going to specify the symbolic name if it requires you can specify the displacement or if it requires you are going to specify the index register for example i am going to specify the sum which is a symbolic name the second example that i am going to specify by using the displacement and the third one is by using the index register we consider the simple assembly language for a hypothetical computer smag0 in this language the statement has the following format the optional part is label followed by opcode followed by operand 1 and operand 2 so it consisting of four parts that is label opcode operand 1 and operand 2 in the next slide we are going to uh, see the opcode is mnemonic from one of the following the first mnemonic op opcode that you can use is stop instead of the numeric opcode 00 the purpose of this mnemonic opcode is to stop the execution of the program next mnemonic opcode that is a double t instead of using the numeric opcode 01 which adds the operand 2 into the register the next opcode that you can use is sub where the purpose of this mnemonic opcode is subtract the operand 2 from the register the next mnemonic opcode is multiplication instead of 0 3 we are able to specify the multiplication of operand 2 into the register 1 the next mnemonic opcode is move r that is move the operand 2 into the register the next mnemonic opcode is move m 
Corresponding numeric opcode is 5 where the purpose is move the register into the operand 2. Next mnemonic opcode is compare. Corresponding numeric opcode is 06 where it compares and, uh, and set appropriate condition codes. In the first chapter, we already studied the concept of the registers and condition codes that are going to be used for the SMAC0 programs. Next mnemonic opcode is BC and the corresponding purpose is branch on condition. The next mnemonic opcode is division. It divides the register by operand 2. Read is the mnemonic opcode instead of numeric opcode 9 where it read the input and store it into the operand 2. And the last mnemonic opcode that we are going to use is print using the numeric opcode 10 that is 10 which is going to print the content of operand 2. We are going to use four register that is A register, B register, C register and D register and the number of condition codes, six condition codes that is LT which stands for less than, LE stands for less than or equal to, EQ stands for equal to, GT stands for greater than, GE stands for greater than or equal to and the last condition code that we are going to use is any. The operand to refers to the memory address using the symbolic name. Now we will see some of the examples of, of assembly instructions. The first instruction over here it is add a register A which add the content of A into the content of A register. Here the mnemonic opcode is A double D. The first operand is A register and second operand is A. The second instruction is move R A register and A which move the content of A into the A register where the mnemonic opcode is move R. The next instruction is move M a register B. Here it move the content of A register into B. Next instruction is it is going to compare the content of A register with the content of C and set the appropriate condition code. The next instruction is BC LT loop. It transfer the control to the statement that is labeled as loop if the condition code LT is set. The next instruction read A. Read the input through keyboard and store it into A. And the last instruction is print the content of A onto the screen. So these are the number of sample assembly language instructions. Next we will see the types of statement. An assembly program contains three kinds of statement. First one is called as imperative statement. Second one is called as declaration statement. And the third one is called as assembler directives. Now we will see each and every one in detail. Imperative statement specify the action to be performed during the execution of the assembled program. Imperative statements are assembled into machine code by assembler. For example, read A and subtract A register A. So these statements are going to specify the action to be performed. The second type of statement is called as declaration statement. These statements are used to declare variables and constants. DS statement declares a variable and reserves a specified memory area for the symbol. 
the format for this instruction is symbol ds constant the example is a ds1 means it reserves one word memory area for the symbol a now dc statement is used to define constant name the format for this instruction is symbol dc and the single quote we are going to specify the value for example minimum dc1 declares the constant name minimum with the value 1 the constant declared by dc statement actually initializes memory words to given values such constant values are not protected by assembler they may be changed by moving new values into the memory word the above constant minimum value can be changed by moving new value into it as move m b register minimum a literal differs from constant which helps to ensure that value is not changed during the execution of the program a literal is an operand with the syntax equal to and the value that is given in the single quotes for example add a register equal to 10 uses a literal directly as the operand when an assembler encounters the use of literal in the operand field of the statement it allocates memory word to contain the value of literal the value of literal is protected by assembler whereas the values those are defined by using the DC statements are not protected by the assembler. The third type of statement is called as assembler directive. This statement direct the assembler to perform certain action during the assembly of a program. For example, start statement. The syntax is start followed by some constant value. For example, start 500, which indicate that the first word of target program generated by assembler stored at the lo address location 500. The next assembler directive is end. This statement indicates the assembler to stop the assembly process. Now we will see the design of an assembler. To develop a design specification for an assembler, following four step approach is used. The first approach is identify the information to perform a task. Second is design a data structure to record the information. Third is to determine the process which is used to obtain and maintain the information. And the last is determine the process to perform the task. Now in the design of an assembler, first of all we will see the overview of assembly process. Assembly is a translation process which is divided into two phases. The first phase is called as analysis phase and second phase is called as synthesis phase. Now we will see in detail the analysis phase. This phase determines the meaning of source language statement. The primary function of analysis phase is to build the symbol table. The symbol table contains the symbolic names and their addresses. So it associates the memory address with symbolic names and the program statement. This function is called as memory allocation. 
A data structure location counter is introduced to implement the memory lo allocation. LC always holds that is location counter always holds the address of next memory word in the target program. It is initialized to a constant specified in the start statement. And we know that start statement always followed by start with the constant value. Location counter is updated as per the length of different instructions. A data structure mnemonic table is used to hold the mnemonic, numeric code and length of each opcode. Now we will see the task those are performed by analysis phase. The first task that is performed by analysis phase is that it is going to separate the label, mnemonic opcode and operand fields of the statement. If in the instruction the label is present, then it is going to insert the pair symbol with the location counter contained into the symbol table. The third task that is performed by the analysis phase is validate the mnemonic opcode by searching it in the mnemonic table. The next task is performed that is it is going to validate the register code or the condition code. And the last task that is it is going to update the location counter content by considering the memory requirement of the statement. So students that's all for today's lecture. Thank you for careful listening.